Hello everybody, welcome along. My name is Benjamin Bloom. This is the Benjamin Bloom Football Channel. Please leave your bias at the door. And this is Euro 2020 Group Preview. Number five, we are on to Group E, featuring Poland, Spain, Slovakia and Sweden. Maybe a, a, a fading Spain, but compared to the very, very high bar they set about a decade ago, there's only really one way you can go from that, winning three major tournaments on the bounce. I wonder how soon we'll, or if ever, we'll see that again. And then uh, some possible openings for the other teams. Um, although we said this about other groups... Will they all draw with each other and, you know, force the points total down? And this will be one of the groups, or one of the two groups, where third place doesn't qualify. It's going to be an interesting one. This one, let's go through team by team. And we will start with the Poles, who are ranked 19 in the world. That medal there is an Olympic uh, medal from 1972. Pass, someone will pick me up. In the comments, Paolo Sousa is the manager. Uh, very familiar to us, isn't he? Um, when I did my championship Euro 20 team, 2020 team, he was the manager because he's managed Swansea and QPR, I think. Great player, though, wasn't he, for Juventus and Dortmund as well. And the Poles, obviously one name sticks out because what you have is uh, essentially a, a minor nation, but with a world-class striker. And then the question becomes, can you supply that world-class striker in the same way he is at club level? And can he score four or five goals in the tournament? Because more often than not, that golden boot guy can take his team quite far through. Although there is often, when you look at golden boot winners, there's often a hat-trick in the group phase. Um, I think that helped out Harry Kane and Gary Lineker winning it. In fact, wasn't Gary Lineker's hat-trick against Poland? There we go. We're doing very well here, aren't we? So Lewandowski is obviously the class above in this one. Although Zielinski, transfer marked, have got as the um, second highest value player. They're, we're familiar with Szczesny uh, from Arsenal, now at Juventus. Uh, Bednarek as well. I'm trying to see if there's any other uh, sort of Premier League names there. What we do have is Michael Hellick from the Championship and Barnsley. So, uh, yeah, it's an interesting mix. And just with that X factor of having a elite, elite striker, sometimes that can win your games, can't it? If you just create that half chance for him. So uh, let me know what you think about the polls. We did see them in the England World Cup qualifying group. I think we did that game, didn't we? In England won, Maguire scored late on, didn't he? Um, but Lewandowski didn't play. So that would have given me, I think, a far better barometer um, from what I've seen. So yeah, going to be an interesting one, the polls. Uh, let's move on to the Spanish, um, who obviously have now moved um, past and into history goes the uh, sort of Del Bosque reign. It's Luis Enrique now, and of course, um, on the back or alongside, let's just say, that great era with uh, Guardiola at Barcelona and uh, Busquets, um, Iniesta, Xavi, the midfield three that just, when we weigh up midfield threes in history, is that's going to be the best balanced one ever. Isn't it? I think just incredible. So what have they got now? Look at the honours as well. So sixth in the world still. It's below England, isn't it? Uh, one World Cup, three European Championships. And obviously three of those four honours were in that golden era. Um, in terms of Premier League familiar players, there's Rodri in there. Uh, Ferran Torres. So two of the Manchester City guys. Three, in fact. There is... Americ Laporte as well. Transfer marked have actually got uh, Marcos Llorente and Mikel Oirazabal, excuse me, or I have to do one of those in Spanish for those who like to expect me to um, pronounce everything in the correct mother language, but 
There we go. You know my thoughts on that. Um, they're down as the most um, expensive or highest valued players. That's the last competitive team. You can still see Sergio Busquets in there. Jordi Alba's been around forever as well. But a bit of a different looking side that's only ever going to get um, compared, isn't it? And it's hard to go through from era to era. But they're still going to be favourites in this group in terms of having more star power than um, all the other teams in the group. Frankly, then where they lie against the Italians, the French, the Germans, the English, the Portuguese, etc. We'll find out later in the tournament, won't we? Let me know your thoughts on the Spaniards. There are the Slovakians who you would, you'd have as the outsiders, wouldn't you? Um, Transfer Marked have got one highly, highly valued player there for Inter, uh, Milan Skriniar, who seems to be a bit of a um, Andy Robertson type figure as, you know, the one player. And you've got him, again, you talked about the Poles having the class striker. They've got the class centre half, it would appear there. Um, we're familiar with Marek Hamzik, aren't we, who was at uh, Napoli in a very good era. We're also familiar with the goalies, aren't we? Look there, Dubravka of Newcastle and Rodak of Fulham. Uh, Stefan Tarkovic is the boss. Ranked 34 in the world, as we said. They do look like the outsiders here. And I think people are going to be forecasting possibly a zero or a one um, in the points column off the three games. Maybe being a bit harsh there. We'll see how it pans out, but... Good luck to them. But Slovakia do seem the outsiders. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And here are the Swedes. Um, and obviously one name jumps off the page there in the previous game, previous competitive games. Latan Ibrahimovic gloriously came back and I believe is now injured. So um, yeah, there you go. Um, Alexander Isak will be carrying the threat up the top for them. Um, we know about Forsberg, don't we? Lindelof of Manchester United in there. And look with my championship hat on. There is Pontus Janssen, who's in the Premier League now, finally. Didn't make it with Leeds. Has made it with Brentford now. Jan Anderson manages the Swedes. 20th in the world. Oh, look, there's Seb Larsson still there as well. He's been around forever, uh, hasn't he? Um, I'm trying to compare them up to previous um, previous sort of Swedish teams. I'm trying to think. I remember in 92 uh, with Brolin and Darlene. But I think, were they the home nation there in 92? I'm trying to remember. Possibly they, they, they were. I can't remember, uh, frankly. But it feels like the Swedes always have one or two second, third tier not in a Lewandowski or a Kane or a Ronaldo or an Mbappe um, category, but kind of second or third tier players. And then a smattering of others playing in, I don't know, sort of Germany and England, um, etc. So perhaps they're a bit above the Slovakians, but um, maybe they're going to struggle against the Spanish. And who knows, Poland v Sweden. Keep your eye on that one. That should be a good game, shouldn't it? There is the schedule and look at it. Sweden v Poland is the round three game. So that may well, assuming the Spanish farewell against both of those teams in the previous two rounds, that may well be a second place shootout. So that should be fun on the last day. You'd expect the Spaniards to probably be qualified before they play the Slovakians. But you never know. A draw could... Uh, jump in there somewhere, couldn't it? So uh, the Poles and the Swedes um, going to be looking to have possibly three on the board going into the last game. And then then we get into uh, fastest losers territory and will four points be enough? It should be, shouldn't it? So it may be that a draw might suit both then depending on how rank outsiders the Slovakians end up being. Shall we see what our friends at Betfair are saying? Please gamble responsibly. Um, and probably no surprise, really, uh, given the Lewandowski factor 
as well. Uh, Spain, heavy, heavy favourites to qualify from this group. Could be a six, seven, nine pointer. Uh, this one for Spain. And then Poland tucked in Sweden and Slovakia as the outsiders. So pretty much as I see it and really looking forward to um, we talk about the knockout phases. It feels like that's going to be a knockout game. It might not be, but it does. I'm hyping it up already between Poland and Sweden in round three of Group E. So um, I've had my say. You have yours. Let me know you one, two, three, four. It's fairly... <laughs> I'm, I get accused of sitting on the fence a lot. It's fairly plain to put Spain 1 and Slovakia 4. Just not sure on Poland and Sweden. I think I'm going to go with Betfair and the conceived wisdom and the and the bookies here. And let's go for Poland 2nd and Sweden 3rd. But um, if... It could be goal difference, couldn't it? And can, um, can Sweden... And or Poland, but if they both end on four, which is plausible, isn't it? They could both go through as well. We're just trying to figure out those groups now where we're going to get a nine point winner and a zero pointer and then possibly two three pointers. Someone will qualify with three um, in second, possibly. Um, is that possible? Nine, three, three, zero. Yeah, possibly, isn't it? Oh, God. Um, we will see how it pans out. Let me know what you think down there. In the comments, that is Group E. Just one more, maybe the most interesting one to do. We'll try and get that tomorrow. Group F, and then we are in to the tournament. Cannot wait. Uh, thank you, everybody, for watching. Over and out. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. To see more videos from this channel, hit the subscribe button. And to be notified every time we upload, ring the bell for those notifications to come through on your device. If you really want to support the channel and me as a content creator, I will be eternally grateful if you head over to the merch store and grab something or support over on Patreon, patreon.com slash Benjamin Bloom. Thank you for your time. Go and watch another video.